Well, the sun streams down lifetrons. I mean, onto the planet. But the clouds that build up capture the lifetrons in their bulk. Builds up a tremendous charge, which, when it reaches a certain peak, will jump to the planet itself, to the ground, and you get the flash of lightning and the crack of thunder. We sleep at night because originally we were not um, we were not eaters, we didn't eat. We relied on receiving lightrons. Lifetrons. Mm, could call it lightrons. And I think I use them interchangeably. In other words, they're the same from my point of view. I think they are the same thing. You think this is strange, but that's what being a plant is. When the sunlight's not there, it curls up and goes to sleep. It just waits. Nothing happens until morning. Um, the photosynthesis simply shuts down. We're not descended, you see, from carnivores. Carnivore is interesting. He'll, he'll hunt at night. One, because the creatures he can eat um, won't have much defence. Um, you know, they'll be sleeping. And two, because he's getting his um, life trons from eating their flesh. He's getting it second hand, you see. He's um, a bit like a scavenger, but a nocturnal one and uh, not so much a scavenger, but a hunter. He makes his own uh, um, carrion, you know, dead dead bodies to eat. He, he kills them and then eats them. Whereas the scavenger just mops up those that have died. But we are not naturally um, scavengers or um, or hunters. So we tend to go to sleep at night. It's just that we've taken to rely on food. In other words, um, the life source second hand instead of simply from sunlight. Of course, all the energy, basically all the energy comes from the sun, even, of course, um, fossilized energy and so forth. It's from, in effect, the sun originally. Although you could say that the planet itself is a small star with a, a crust over it. And uh, less spectacular than the stars, but um, generating its own heat within presumably a sort of nuclear fission type uh, situation where the heavy metals um, tend to fall together in the depths and so uh, generate energy. I don't think I've got it entirely right, of course, but something of that order. Of course, we have the scriptural thing that God breathed into um, the man he'd made, Adam, and he became a living soul, which suggests that there's something in the breath, um, the oxygen, presumably, uh, reacting in the body with the sugars, uh, releasing energy. Um, in other words, we're getting our life trons from uh, eating vegetable matter which is trapped um, sunlight because of photosynthesis into sugars that we use. You could say then, 
let me push this a bit further. That if you're living on direct sunlight, then you don't need to breathe because you're not burning up sugars. And this, of course, the sunlight is making the sugars in you since we were evolved from plants originally and that that facility of making sugars is still in us. Mm, conceivable. Uh, <laughs> as we could check it out then. Might need a few miracle men around uh, that don't eat to um, study. This doesn't seem to have much relevance for the spiritual life, but it's a sort of fascination in itself, isn't it? It's thought that the advanced um, yogi, you know, spiritual person, can just sit certain of the divine, of God, and doesn't breathe, stops breathing. You certainly breathe less when you calm down, and when you calm the breath, <coughs> people can go without breathing for a long time. Probably Houdini could do it. It's not that he was holding his breath, he'd simply stopped breathing and shut the body down when he was, uh, you know, self-incarcerated in, in a trunk in the water and so on for long periods of time. I think he came to a sticky end, so he must have misjudged, uh, <laughs> must have misjudged things at some point, poor chap. Paramahansa and uh, yogis generally have um, pushed the uh, understanding that we receive um, power or energization through the medulla oblongata at the base of the skull, you know, top of the spine. And uh, that man can live from that energy directly and, of course, alone. Um, that, in effect, life power can stream into the body from the cosmos around us. It seems less incredible when you realize that um, stored in, you know, the smallest handful of matter is an incredible abundance of energy. Um, almost beyond conception. Atomic or subatomic energy bound in the atoms such that you could say this vast universe is in fact an astonishing mix of concentrations of intense energy and yet we we, we walk about in it and live as if it were a nice peaceful day and we sit quietly and meditate and we think everything is still and peaceful but in fact even the body itself is a seething mass of whirling electrons and so on shifting at speeds approaching that of light that is just unbelievable but it's what science tells us believe it or not that's what it is <laughs> And so the scientist sees matter quite differently. And I think when he sees space quite differently too, not as that void, but as that um, foundation towards energy itself, uh, a phenomenon more like thought, than energy. Hmm. I think there'll be staggering process, progress in understanding creation. The 
creation is a continual process. And the vast bulk of that matter unexplained out there and energy in the universe is in fact bound up in what we have looked upon as empty vacuum space. Uh, and that's really weird guy I met when I was a humanist teenager who said it's all ether. And I thought, oh my goodness, I really have met a nutter now. He's absolutely right. <laughs> it took me about 70 years to come to that conclusion, but still, there you go. Not 70, no, a bit less than that. A mere 50, perhaps, 55. <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>